my father was born in uh, Vermont and uh, if you know anything about Vermont you know it's extremely green uh, it's called the green state in fact I think but uh, he was born in Vermont and it's ironic that he should marry a girl from Pittsburgh Pennsylvania steel industrial capital of the world the furthest thing from anything green and uh, after he married my mother he you know uh, moved to Pittsburgh and uh, got a job in the steel mills um, and worked there until they uh, laid him off after 35 years or so um, but in his entire life he never forgot Vermont and the green mountain state where he came from and this this love for nature and the natural he kept with him uh, his entire life and he tried to uh, give it to his children impart it to his children who were growing up in the steel capital of the country this 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 love for the natural and nature we were always going taking trips to lakes around Pittsburgh Stoughton Lake uh, Lake Erie um, parks he'd take us at night or on the weekends I remember going to parks with huge ball fields you know right outside the city he had this love for nature that I got as a child um, growing up in Penn Hills which was a suburb outside of Pittsburgh and uh, where I spent very formative years of my life because we had a house in the suburbs but behind it was a lot of undeveloped uh, land and fields and uh, me and my brother would spend days and days out in the fields and we always found something to do you know so I grew up with this love for the nature and natural and uh, uh, parks and greenery you know which being homeless now for the last three years I have since rediscovered because having lived the past uh, what 20 years in the uh, southwest and west whether it's Pasadena California or Arizona uh, there's been very little greenery and very little uh, woods as I knew woods as a young boy um, and so it's been nice kind of rediscovering this this love that I have for trails and nature and parks and greenery instead of uh, sand and uh, a cactus and uh, dry brittle prickly palo verde trees so um i'm enjoying it and it's nice and uh i've been thinking a lot lately about my father with father's day coming up here um in about a week um will be father's day and i remember one time my father after a particularly difficult year i guess um, we went to Vermont uh, to visit my grandparents like we always did every summer we would go to uh, Vermont and I asked my mother one time you know why every summer did we have to go to Vermont and see our grandparents she said well it's the only thing that your father asked for and every year 
I do it for him. Well, after one particularly, I guess, bad year in the household, uh, he took off uh, during our stay. And uh, we kids wanted to go with him. And I said, oh, where are you going? He's out like, no, no, I, I just want to be alone. I just want to, uh, you know, I just have to go somewhere. And he took with him the little eight, Super 8 millimeter camera that we had. Um, I noticed it missing because I was a photographer in a family. I was like, well, I want to film this or film that. And anyways, he came back and we never asked him where he went. And then a week or so later, we got back all the rolls of Super 8 film that were shot during our trip to our grandparents in Vermont and there was this one oh two minutes of film that was nothing but a creek And I looked around the room, as the rest of the family did, at each other, saying, who shot this? Uh, did, uh, did, you know, it's, Greg, where did you shoot this at? It's like, I'm there. I didn't shoot it. I don't, you know, and my dad and back said, I shot it. I said, okay, why? Uh, it's like, it, it was nothing but a creek going by. He's there. Um, I just wanted to shoot it. Like, okay. My dad is long dead. This is not a creek. The Rio Grande. Happy Father's Day.